But Brandon, let's move on into our next topic. I mentioned his name. I mentioned the school, but now we're going to dive into another SEC team. Kevin Sumlin from Texas A&M. He is fired out of here. And like I said during the Tennessee segment, when I saw this, my first thought was ding dong, the witch is dead. Not because like Kevin Sumlin's a bad guy, but because how many times have we talked about Will Kevin Sumlin get fired? Is this the time he's on the hot seat? Like, Plenty. There were numerous times that we had talked about Kevin Sumlin and his hot seat. I'm going to look it up just for fun. But while I look that up, I want to ask you the question. They have offered, they have a job offer on the table for Jimbo Fisher to come from Florida State to be the head coach at Texas a and I'm looking at a report from eight hours ago that Jimbo Fisher again declines to comment on the job offer from Texas A&M, I will ask you, though, will Jimbo Fisher become the next head coach for Texas A&M? Uh, well, Jimbo Fisher has been the Florida State head coach since 2010, and he has come up with an 83-23 and 23 coaching record in that time. Mm-hmm. And also, let's not forget the 2013 National Championship. So if he leaves the ACC... And he goes to be the head coach over at the SEC, in the SEC, over to A and M. Ricky, this is a huge shakeup because the ACC loses one of the best coaches, if not the best coach, over there. And then, and I mean, you could argue with argue with Dabo Sweeney, which I would do, but um, I. I think that the SEC would gain such a a quality coach and another guy that the Mm -hmm. SEC, I think, needs. The type of guy, the type of coach that knows how to win, that knows how to work with some quarterbacks. You may love him. You may hate him. But Jameis Winston was a great quarterback over there at Florida State, and I think a big part of that was thanks to Jimbo Fisher. Here's the thing I just looked up before before I get into the Jimbo Fisher there have been three big times we've talked about this. One was a year ago where we said, will Texas A&M fire Kevin Sumlin after 2016 season? Then this year we had two months ago the will Kevin Sumlin survive the UCLA comeback loss, which I believe I said no, but I might have said maybe. The I one think I, I said no. The Absolutely one I not. did say no, and I remember this, is five months ago, almost half a year ago, when we talked about the – A.D. Scott Woodward, his comments about Kevin Smith, and we asked, will Texas A&M fire Kevin Sumlin after 2017? I believe in that one. I said, yes, they will. He is not making it through this year. I got to re-listen to that because I want to know if I'm right because that's all it comes down to in the end, being right or being wrong. But this would be a home run for Texas A&M, and there's no reason why they shouldn't go balls to the wall to get Jimbo Fisher because – the big thing that I have said, and I'm going to be honest, I stole this point a little bit from Colin Cowherd, but I look at the SEC and I see Nick Saban, but then it's like all the other coach, like they're losing their big coaches. Les Miles no longer there. You go ahead and like, I mean, Gus Malzahn, it's weird. One year you want to fire up and him. Down, up One and year down, you yes. want to fire him. The other year he's winning the national cha- or in a national championship for you guys and put you guys in the SEC title game. You don't have an Urban Meyer anymore. Florida's in disarray ever since he left. Kevin Sumlin has been good, but not really. He had a really good season with Johnny Manziel, but really I think it was only Johnny Manziel that got him that good season. Jimbo Fisher would give the SEC a big name coach. And it's kind of like what I look at for the Big 10. When Urban Meyer came over, Urban Meyer started it. He came over, then Jim Harbaugh came over, then James Franklin came over. Now they're the coaches that we talk about in the Big 10. This could be it too. Right now in the SEC all we talk about is Nick Saban and then which SEC coach we want to see fired? Brett Bielema was on the hot seat this year. He gone. Then you've got the Butch Jones. He gone. Kevin Sumlin. He gone. All the, James Franklin, even a guy like Urban Meyer, leaving the SEC to go to the Big Ten. So I think this would be one that why not steal a guy from the ACC who, I mean, right now you look at it. I know this season you can't pin this record on Jimbo Fisher. 
If they have DeAndre Francois, it's a different kind of a season for Florida State. But who knows? Jimbo Fisher looking at it. You know, I win this game. I'm bowl eligible. I'm 6-6. Six and six. Is this the beginning of the end for me at Florida State? Am I going to hop off this train before it crashes? That's what I think Jimbo Fisher might be thinking about right now is, am I going to be able, is this the teeter-totter where everything starts to go down and can I get off of this before it hits rock bottom? I think it's one of those. I definitely do. I think at at this point, I mean, he knows what he has had. Mm -hmm. And if I'm Jimbo Fisher, that's that's what I'm thinking. And I'm not necessarily, let me me get off of this before it hits rock bottom, Mm -hmm. but I'm thinking... 83 and 23. And if I could get a bowl, get to a bowl this year, I don't care if it's the Tax Slayer BS bowl, Mm -hmm. I am feeling pretty good because that means since 2010, I've been to a bowl every single year. Yeah. And I can take that over to Texas AM. And you know what I can do at Texas AM, Ricky? I know you can do it at, at, at Florida at Florida State, but what you also get over at at Texas A and M, good recruits, good recruiting, SEC recruiting. He can really start, I think, to put together a good football team over there at A and M. Also, what's one thing that they've been missing since Johnny Manziel? Like truly, truly missing a quarterback. That's exactly right. And what's the one thing? That he seems to work so well with is a quarterback, Remember, and, and that's 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 one of the points that I really want to hit home on mm-hmm. is because I think we forget through all the crap and all the all the crab legs that we had to eat to get here is Jameis Winston was he was a magician. The guy could be down twenty points mm-hmm. at halftime. He'd come roaring back and win the damn game. I, I mean he. Was such a good quarterback, and, and a lot of that's a lot of that's on him. But Jimbo Fisher did a great job of being that head coach. It did a great job of helping to bring him along and get him to the point where he ultimately is now today, and that's an NFL quarterback. Well, and the thing that I think about is also, and this is, I guess you can kind of put the yeah, you can put this under Kevin Sumlin. How many times had we seen the quarterback position since Johnny Manziel kind of get away from Texas A&M to where Kyle, like Kyle Allen, supposed to come in, he's supposed to be the guy. He's not there anymore. He's with the Houston Cougars now, I believe. And I got to do my research really quick that Kenny Hill, yep, Kenny Hill, 2013, mm-hmm. yep. 2014 was there. He's no longer there. He's having a pretty good season, except for that one game where he didn't show up against Iowa State, um, that he's having a pretty good redshirt senior year. Like, they have tried to get quarterbacks in there. They just haven't had anyone to stay and be the guy after being a high-topped recruit, and Jimbo Fisher can be that guy. I mean, you got Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is a little bit above the rest because, like, looking at the crab legs, looking at the rape allegations, all of that aside— He's the guy on the football field that had that net. He had it. He had it that could rally the team around him, get the team, pull him back. How many locker room speeches, if you could understand him, um, that he would say and he would rile the team up and they would go ahead and win that game, unless it was Marcus Mariota because he can't beat Marcus Mariota at the college level or the NFL level because Marcus Mariota is the better quarterback. But he had that special it factor. DeAndre Francois, still a great quarterback. I wouldn't say he has that same it factor as Jameis Winston, but still a good quarterback. Bring Jimbo Fisher in. He'll be able to recruit you a quarterback. He'll be able to recruit you his guy. Now the thing is, and this is what I want to ask you, is could Jimbo Fisher, in your mind, come into the SEC and compete with Alabama? Or is that me putting the ho- putting the carriage in front of the horse because Texas A&M same side as Alabama and as we talked about last week before the loss in the Iron Bowl every single year it seems like Alabama's up here and we're comparing everyone else to them. Well, I think one of the points that was made on the broadcast this um past week 
in the this you're talking this, the Iron this, Bowl broadcast. Yeah, this past weekend actually, um, and it was Gary Danielson, I believe, mm-hmm. who said, "If you've got a quarterback, if you've got a good quarterback, you can compete with Alabama." Mm. He's right. Jared Stidham was a huge, huge find for Auburn to be able to get, and. I mean, honestly, take take a look at it. Take take a look at through the years. Through the years, is that if you have a quarterback, if you have a quarterback that can throw, that can run, which mm-hmm. Stidham can do both. Well, and that's that's one of those things where it is going to be a little bit tougher for Alabama to be able to defend against I'm that. Cut take you up. take a look at the national championship the last two years with Deshaun Watson. He didn't win it two years ago. Mm-hmm. He won it last year though. He got his revenge. I lo- Still I, well. I have, I'm a very big fan of what Alabama does, and I'm a, I think mm-hmm. that they have one of the best defenses in the country. But a player like Jameis, uh, Jameis Winston, I, but a player like Deion, D- Deshaun Watson, I was yeah. thinking Jameis Winston, but Deshaun Watson, a guy who can throw the football well, a guy who can run the football extremely well, that's tough. That's very tough for a team like Alabama because you don't know how defend how to defend that. I I think that when that was said on the broadcast this past weekend, it really made me think. You're right. You're right. When I heard that, I'm like, you are right. And this is the first time that I've seen Alabama in a while go against a really good quarterback. You know what? I'm looking back, and the, the last four for sure, because I'm going to count the Iron Bowl in this, but I'm going to go back one more year. I'm going to try my luck a little bit. Because, yeah, okay, that was the year. So I went all the way back until 2012. These are the last losses that they've had. You already mentioned the first two, so I didn't look those up. The Iron Bowl this year and the National Championship last year. Jared Stidham, Deshaun Watson. But then you look at they lose in, I want to say, I don't know the date here, but they lost to Old Miss Rebels, Chad Kelly, or yep. Sean likes to call him, yep. Cad Chelly. Then they lose the year before that to Bo Wallace and the Old Miss Rebels. Before that, that year, they lose to Cardell Jones. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott helped there. He did have two touchdowns. But Cardell Jones did throw for 242 yards, did have 43 on the ground, had a touchdown of his own. They lose to a good quarterback. Then you've got Oklahoma, and this is where it could get sketchy. Okay, Trevor Knight did have a good game. Four touchdowns, one interceptions in that game against A.J. McCarron. Then the year before, you got Nick Marshall. had That was probably the one where it's like, okay, Ricky, you're not selling me there. But then the one before that, and this was 2012, Johnny Manziel. Yeah. Like, what, I went back all the way to 2012, and there was one quarterback, Nick Marshall was probably the only one. And Nick Marshall, I mean, yeah, he only had 97 yards to the year, but he had almost 100 on the ground and three total touchdowns in that game. That's and 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 we have found time and time again. I think we're getting a little I don't want to get too far away from this, but I think yeah. we're still sticking with the point is that you get a quarterback if you can, can if you get a quarterback who is really is that's a really mm-hmm. solid quarterback in in one way or another or bowl. Mm-hmm. Watch out. You're going to be able to compete. You're going to be able to compete with Alabama. So that's where I think Jimbo Fisher would be the best fit because of how well mm-hmm. he has worked with quarterbacks in his time mm-hmm. at Florida State. And if you are trying to bank on that, I think you may have it. And if that's the case, you may be bringing Texas A&M and putting them back on the map sooner than later. Let me ask you this, kind of to wrap this up before we go on into the next topic, which I believe Florida is our next yeah. one here on the podcast. Do you think – I asked – Will he now for sure give me yes or no? Is Jim Fisher going to be at Texas A&M beginning of next year, or will he be at Florida State? The for sure hold you to an answer. Hold me to the 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 or way hold you to the wall. The, the way that he has ended this season at five and six, and. If the reports are right, as hot as Texas A and M, Texas A Texas A and M mm-hmm. is after him, he's going there. He's gonna be, he's gonna be with the Aggies at the end of he's gonna be at the with the Aggies in the next couple of weeks. I think also that he will go to Texas A and M only because 
I think this season's going to be writing on the wall, even though it doesn't have to be, of my quarterback is injured. There's no real, like, of course you're. we're all assuming, oh, DeAndre Francois comes back fine from this injury, but there's no real inkling that, like, or there's no positive way that, nah, that's not what I wanted to say either. There's no, you don't know for sure is what I'm trying to say, that DeAndre Francois is going to be the same player after this injury with all that question and with everything going on this year, I would take the job at Texas A&M. I think Jimbo Fisher will. I just don't think he's commenting on it right now because they got a game to play this week. Yeah. So the reason why he's not commenting on it right now is because he's a, he's a good guy. He's I'm giving my focus to this ball team. It's not like Texas A&M is going to go, well, you got until Friday, and then if not, we're looking elsewhere. He knows that Texas Right now, Jimbo Fisher is the prettiest girl in the room, and he knows Texas A&M has, his, has their eye on him. He doesn't have to go to them. They're going to come to him. Wow, that's the second time I've made like prettiest girl in the room reference. I've been listening too much to like Charles Barkley because he made one of those references on College Game Day this past weekend. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Will Jimbo Fisher be the next head coach at Texas A&M? And also, if he does not, who would you like to see? Because one guy I didn't bring up, some people are saying, if Jimbo Fisher says no, could Texas A&M go after Gary Patterson at TCU and try to bring him in? So let me know what you guys think. If Jimbo Fisher doesn't take it, who would you want to see take the job for the Aggies down below in the comment section? 